In the OHL, the regular season is coming to an end, Abigail, and things are getting really tight at the bottom of the Western Conference. There's less than 10 games remaining in the regular season. Now every point is big, especially for those battling for a playoff spot. We already know Captain Mike Kalma will not be in the lineup for the Owen Sound attack. Curtis McDermott also a scratch for the attack. Starting goaltenders, both teams had great tandems this year. 15-year-old Connor McDavid is set to enter the Ontario Hockey League. The Toronto Marlboros minor midget has been granted exceptional player status by Hockey Canada. McDavid had 72 points in 33 games this season. New head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs addressed the media this morning. Randy Carlisle is taking over from Ron Wilson, who was fired yesterday after the Leafs have gone 1-9-1 in their last 11 games. The University of Waterloo football team introduced its 2012 recruits this afternoon. 18 players have committed to the Warriors for the upcoming season, including a pair of quarterbacks. The intensity level will soar when the Rangers host Owen Sound. Well, that's right, Randy. The fans are just slowly starting to come into the building now. But with the defending champs in, you're right, the intensity level is sure to build. Owen Sound is the first-round opponent of the Kitchener Rangers. And though that team has changed some, the Rangers are not taking them lightly. It would be a bit of an understatement to say things didn't go well for the Toronto Maple Leafs last night, but the young team didn't have time to wallow as they returned to the ACC tonight and hosting John Travaris and the Islanders. James Reimer back in net for the Buds, who got a much better start tonight. Phil Kessel's 36th of the season. Some question if it went in, but I'll tell you the net cam says yes. Junior C hockey tonight. That's right, Rosie. A little bit of a drought happening in New Hamburg, but that was laid to rest this year as it's been 21 years since the New Hamburg Firebirds have reached the OHA quarterfinals. And the local Junior C team hosted an important game. Tonight. The Waterloo Siskins had a chance to pull even with the Stratford Culletons in the opening round of the GOHL playoffs. But Waterloo Rec Complex hasn't exactly been a welcoming place for the Siskins, only 8-18-0 in the regular season at home this year. There isn't a series on the line tonight in the quarterfinals of the GOHL, but going ahead 2-0 can make a big difference to the style of play for Game 3. Is in Baden and Lee, if the Firebirds lose at home, this nice playoff run could be short-lived. That's right, Randy. So they would go down three to nothing to the defending champs, the Grimsby Peach Kings, and that's not a situation that you'd like to be in, but that's something that uh, Shane Gerber, the head coach of the New Hamburg Firebirds, is hoping to uh, not get into that situation tonight. Shane, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, game plan going into game three. The GOHL playoffs are in the second round and one series on the verge of coming to an end. The Stratford Culletons had a 3-1 lead over the Elmira Sugar Kings, but the defending Sutherland Cup champions had other plans. Elmira traveling to Stratford tonight and the Sugar Kings on a power play seven minutes in. Traffic in front, a perfect screen for Scott Nagy giving Elmira the 1-0 lead. The Guelph Storm are facing the Whalers in their first round series. The Storm are coming off a big push to the playoffs. And the players admit it was physically demanding drive. But having succeeded in that pursuit, the team plans to take the momentum and challenge the second-seeded Plymouth Whalers. 1-0 Brantford in the second, and the Eagles are on the power play for Matt Quilty's second of the game. Now early in the third battle in the corner, out to Ryan Clark. Second attempt is good. Winterhawks climb within one. Still in the second, Colts power play. Look at the passing here, leaves, you guessed it, Telegate all alone. His second of the game gives the Colts a 2-1 to lead. Fans go crazy. They would add an empty net and take it 3-1 to the final. The third place Colts take a 1-0 series lead. Game two is tomorrow night in Mississauga. Of course, playoff hair has once again made an appearance. Reader tells CTV his mohawk was initially to be blonde, but in an attempt to turn it red, it actually turned out pink, and he plans on keeping it that way. And this is why everyone loves playing at home. The fan support, of course. Fans not liking this, though. Hawks down 2-1 to one midway through the third. Some chances in front, but then the shot will be taken by Michael Christo and Brennan Pierce gets the tip. His second of the game will tie it at 2. Four minutes later, Christian Bernard speeding in drops for Brandon Zimmerman. And the Winterhawks will take the lead.
And since it feels like summer outside, let's check in on some spring training. Blue Jays and Red Sox in the second. Bases loaded for Travis Schneider. He'll double down the left field line. Eric Thames and Edwin Encarnacion come around to score. Storm down by a goal, but check out the play from the rookie. Hunter Garland kicks it ahead from his stomach, puts it home. You need to take another look. Garland is down, and then on the backhand, he chips it over Igor Babakov. Game is tied. Wow. From last night now, game one, Waterloo facing Stratford. Second period, Brad McClurry gets the centering pass, and the Culleton's veteran buries it with a nice little celebration. That'll do it for sports. Wake up weather is after the break.